complicated. It's best to keep it basic. Uh, open the book, the word is self approved. He's alpha and omega, the answer since the early ages. What you should do is learn about the greatest. Just so you know, our door is always open. Let's study together instead of debating. Share our differences. Let love heal all that's broken. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Good day to each and every one of you. We speak shalom over your lives. If you are a believer in Yahweh, who is our Elohim, then we speak shalom over and through and toward your lives this very day. It's a joy to be with you, to be around you, to understand you, to see you, to experience you. And I pray that you have found peace and grace in your days this day as Yahweh, who is our Elohim, knows you, loves you, requires to see you, and looks forward to having everything to do with you and your life. That's why we say acknowledge him in all your way, and he, Yahweh, will direct your steps. He'll direct your day. He'll direct your way. He'll be everything you need him to be. He just needs you to trust him. In all things him, he will give you and grant you. I promise you, Yahweh does not lie. He never has. He never will. He just can't do it. It's not in him to do it. So I hope that you guys would be favored in him enough to understand that today's service or today's programming we'll talk about will deal specifically with a great deal of what you have always wanted to know. Why am I worrying about life? Should you be worried about life? How bad is life? Why do you worry when you have the God of all salvation on your side? Why are you worrying? It's not a good thing to worry. You have his grace. You have his spirit. You have his joy. You have his purpose. You have his plan. I don't want you to ever have to worry. Don't you worry about a thing. Y'all know the song. Don't you worry about a thing, darling. Stevie Wonder sang that, didn't he, a long time ago. And I want you to know, like Al Jarreau would say, we're in this love together. And as long as we're together, we are servants on the same pathway. We are working together for his glory and for his honor. Then you and I together in him will win all things always. I want you to know that. Don't you worry about a thing. I like Stevie Wonder. Don't you worry about a thing, darling. My brother, my sister, don't you worry about a thing. And if you are the bride of Messiah, yes, you are his darling, his darling eye, you know? Some say Stevie, Stevie said my, my sherry, my. See, and you got to realize that in the kingdom, he's so carnal. Well, in the kingdom, Yahweh wants you to know that you are the beloved of his eyes. Y'all like my singing? Y'all like my singing wasn't good? My singing wasn't good? I'm going for it. I don't care what you think. I'm going for it. So today we're going to get in our proceeding where Minister, Minister, Minister Jackie, are you there? Are you available? Can you help me today? Let the world know. Don't you worry about a thing. Are you there, Minister Jackie? Yeah, ready when you are. Give me some announcements if you don't mind. I'm ready for you right now. Come on, let's get to them. Shalom and welcome to today's our broadcast where the topic is don't worry, just live right. Don't you worry about a thing. One more time. I got to sing more time. Don't you worry about a thing, darling. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Jackie. You got it. Go ahead. Go ahead. I know we're going to have some fun today. So don't do be prepared to take notes of all the discussion today. Don't do worry. Do no, I've got it now. Don't worry. Just live right. For the believer, your life is not to worry about what you have and what you don't have. The kingdom believer's life is to be lived right. So remember, man shall not live by bread alone. You are going to learn today. So while I continue with the rest of these announcements, do take the opportunity to share this broadcast, whether you're here with us in Facebook or on YouTube. And also, if you have comments during the broadcast, do come off of mic, just announce your name, and we'll put you on cue. If you're here with us on Facebook, please just note your questions or comments, and those will be picked up. Don't forget, we're here on the preceding word every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you do not want to miss the topics that have been discussed every Wednesday for Bible study at 7 p.m., where we come together and we are doing the tour of duty, and we're on part five. So don't miss that. That's at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you'll find us here again for our Bible Book Club, where we're in Genesis 20, 
four, and we are asking you to please do read the passage before you come into Bible Book Club so we can have an informed and exciting discussion around those topics. We're here every Sabbath where we open up at, for our Sabbath study at 11 p.m. every Friday and then again at 11 a.m. every Saturday. So please don't forget we extend an invitation for you, your friends, your family and associates to join us every Sunday for our Mora After Sabbath service which commences at 10.15 a.m. We broadcast live through Facebook and we extend the invitation for you to join us on our various platforms. Thank you so much, Apostle. I'm looking forward to today. Don't worry, just live right. Back to you. Don't you worry about a thing. Oh, my. Don't you worry about a thing, darling. Because the Bible says that you should just simply live and live all things out through him because his word is so true and so important. But remember, many of you are, as we love to say here in this particular kingdom post in the earth that we are fellows in a ship. Listen, if you're coming in on our channels of uh, Clubhouse, please make sure you hit the heart sign or I'm sorry, Clubhouse. Make sure you make a chat in our box. Um, share, would y'all share the room? Y'all might want to share the room today. It's going to be some fun. Uh, a little bit of fun anyway. Many people don't like to do it, but I like to do it anyway. It's going to have some fun. Go ahead in the chat box and let me know where you're coming from, where you're hitting us from. If you're on the virtual feeds for YouTube and our vlogging and blogging, then make sure that you hit like and subscribe. Hit like, share, and subscribe. Hit like, uh, hit like, like, share, and subscribe. I think I got it right eventually. <laughs> I think I got it right this time. You want to do that today. Uh, and I don't see enough heart signs up there. I see only eyes, and I see more eyes, and I see hearts. I need to see some hearts up there. Can y'all help me out? YouTube, Facebook, let's do it. Can y'all do it? And share. Share. You're going to want to share this today. All right, listen, when you are living in the kingdom of Elohim and you all know that we live by the kingdom, the, 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 the just live, the just live, the just live, the just live, the just live. Somebody say, I am the just of Elohim. Say it, say it, say it, say it. I am the just of Elohim. All right. Just one of us. That's fine. Oh, I just dropped something. Sorry, guys. That's just one of us. I am the just of Elohim. And when you say that, when you understand that, that means that you are telling the world, you are telling Elohim, you're telling yourself that you are saved. You're in the kingdom of Elohim and you live by faith. You are just. You live justly. You desire to live justly. You desire to look and be considered as the just of Elohim. And listen, the just live by faith and not by sight. You always so you've always time you've always heard me state that uh without faith and I'm quoting the bible without faith it is impossible to please the father. Well, faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of Elohim. And so if you understand that, then there is a need for you to embrace the reality that what Yahweh wants you to do is live by his word. Faith is his instructions. His instructions are his word. And those words created everything you know. But the Bible, the Bible said, I don't care what the Bible says. <gasps> what? Right. I care what the word says. Well, what are you talking about? See, this is why you shouldn't listen to these little guys. They're all rogue. They don't know what they're doing. They say they're of God. They're not of God. Listen, I don't care about what your Bible says. I care about what the word of God in your Bible says. Because the stories in your Bible, save Messiah and the Torah, they're not the word of Elohim. The word of Elohim is what makes your Bible a story. The word of Elohim is what gave you Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel. The word of Elohim, your Torah, gave you and had lived for you the life of one Yeshua HaMashiach, who is the living word in flesh. And now you have the Bible to give you commentary of what the word of Elohim did. The just shall live by faith, not by what you see. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the word of Elohim. And the word of Elohim is found in your Bible. It's not your Bible. 
So the Bible tells of the stories of Elohim. The Bible then tells you the instructions of Elohim, which we should all be worshiping and honoring and looking forward to doing. So understand this, that the Bible gives you the word. Somebody say the Torah. If y'all believe that, just shout Torah right now. I'm going to have a good day. Torah. The Bible encompasses the Torah. The Torah is in the Bible. And then the Bible tells you stories about people who did or did not obey those first five books. Ain't that deep? It hits a little bit different, don't it? <laughs> yes. What do you think that the prophets Isaiah and Ezekiel and Daniel were doing? They were telling the people who got conquered because they didn't obey the instructions of the Torah and now they're subservient to some other group of people, then Yoel and Malachi would tell you how to get back into the proper care and to the grace and power and spirit of Yahweh, who is our Elohim. And when you did that, that's what the prophets would do. But the people of the day would get upset with the prophets and say, it don't take all that, pretty much like preachers are doing today. It don't take all that. And what Yahweh really wants you and I to understand is that it requires the word of Elohim to bless you. It is the word of Elohim that gave you life. It is the word of Elohim that created everything you understand about life. It is the word of Elohim that puts you in position to be any and everything you are. You look in that mirror, it's the word that made what you're looking back at. So the Bible gives you an additional, I like to say, 61 books in a 66 book Bible. And I like to say 79 books of an 84 book Apocrypha, those first five books are the instructions for humanity on how to live life according to the God of your said salvation. The stories after that tell you who obeyed and who did not obey those first five books, how they ended up in a curse or how they ended up in a blessing. And then you have the prophets post-exilic, pre-exilic, and exilic prophets, major and minor prophets, telling you and reminding the people, this is what Yahweh said to do. Why are you not doing it? We're getting to our point today. I didn't make no clickbait. Just don't worry. Just live. Just live right. How do I live right? The words of righteousness. The grace of Elohim appeared to us, teaching us, to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live a certain way, soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Well, who was the grace of God that appeared? <gasps> Yeshua, the Adonai in him, which is the rightness of Elohim. He came, like he said, to show us how to live the instructions of God that Israel, after Moshe, could not find a way to do. He says, here's how you do it. I feel like singing a song, wrote a song about it. Well, somebody wrote a song about it. Like to hear it? Here it go. This is how we do it. That's what he did. Yeshua came to show you how to live the Torah. And the stories that lead up to his necessity are found in the Tanakh. Those are the books of Joshua up until Malachi. And then you have the books of the Brikadessa from Acts to Revelation that remind you about everything that first five books says is going to happen and how you should live soberly, righteously, and godly today. Messiah says, I didn't come to destroy the Torah I came to show you how to live it. Ta-da! Don't you worry about a thing. Just trying to help y'all. Don't you worry about a thing, darling. I want y'all to know that we're in this together. We are in this together. And when we together obey his words, we are going to be considered by other nations all over this world as blessed. Did y'all know that was the instruction Yahweh gave to Israel? If you would hearken diligently 
unto the voice, meaning the words that I give you this day, I will cause all nations of the world to see you as blessed. You will lend to nations and, and not borrow. Mm. I got choked up there. You will lend to nations and not borrow. The 14 verses of Deuteronomy 28 fall to you, chase you down. But you got to live by faith. And you don't worry when you're living by faith. So today, in the proceeding word, because man shall not live by bread alone. I, I love me some bread, though. I ain't going to lie. Unleavened, leaven. Yes, yes, Lord. Pumpernickel rye. Yes, Lord. Sourdough. My God. Pretzel bread. My goodness. Good father. Now I'm hungry. It's lunchtime. Listen. But man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh, who is our Elohim, he never said man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the Bible or the Apocrypha. Because who said that man shall not live by bread alone is the Messiah. And the books of the New Testament were not even written. He was the New Testament. He was living. So he couldn't have been talking about the words I'm going to tell you, the words Paul's going to write. Paul was looking to kill him. He couldn't have told you the words that Yochanan, my new disciple, was talking about or Peter, my new disciple, was talking about. He wasn't talking about that. He says, y'all going to get this in a minute. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh, who is our Elohim. This is what you have to understand about what took place in the New Testament. Messiah says, the things you see me do, you'll do greater than, right? Uh, but the things you see me do and the things you hear me say, they are my father's words. They're not my words. His words made me. His words instruct me. His words will put me in a grave. His words will raise me from that grave. His words are what was given to Moshe. And if Moshe's people after him would have done them the way that they were supposed to be done, there'd be no real need for me to show up. Now, I can think some of you say, well, that's subjective because Genesis chapter 315 says he's going to give his word. And he did. He really, really did. But at the end of the day, you must understand that man shall not live by bread alone. Man lives because the word of Elohim keeps man alive. Now, if you, don't dis if you disobey the word of Elohim, then your life can become, watch this, subpar. If you should to obey the word of Elohim, you may suffer some strife, some envy, some hateration from some hater nation, but you will always be above and not beneath anybody who's hating on you, even if you can sense them, smell them, see them, and they're trying to stab you, cut you, shoot you, and put hands on you. You still, by Yahweh's design, the word, always be above them. Somebody say, don't worry, I'm just going to live right. Somebody, somebody say, don't worry, I'm just going to live right. Don't worry, I'm just going to live right. Can I sing it again? Don't you worry about a thing. Ah. Don't you worry about a thing, darling. I like that. Stevie, was it? Stevie was a wonder, but I think that our counselor is known as Wonderful. Stevie Wonder was, his, was another guy's name, but Messiah, who tells us not to worry, he is the Wonderful. Okay, let me show you why that's important. Because he said, the things you see me do, greater works than these shall you do also. Anybody want to do great works? Okay, y'all deep. Y'all going to be deep today. It's Monday. Y'all not going to frustrate me. But let me ask you a question. If you went fishing, would you like to be able to pull two, fish, two, two pieces of gold out the fish mouth? Absolutely. I thought so. Yes, sir. If y'all was having a picnic, have you ever done a picnic? You, you, you know how you got to prepare for a picnic? You got to get the blanket. You got to get the barbecue right. You got to go out there. Anybody ever did a birthday party at the park and you got to reserve the pavilion? And if it's a, a pavilion you can't reserve, you got to get out there when the park opens to get the first one. And nobody, 
Nobody? Y'all not going to? Y'all didn't present? Yeah, you got to put tape in your balloons and put your name on it and get all set up, then carry the charcoal to the pit, then get the barbecue pit set up, get the racks on there and come out, put aluminum foil all over the table, put your plastics down, get your chairs, put your balloons up and preserve that spot for you all to have your party, your picnic, your family event. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I've been there, done that, right? Got the car backed up, you all up on the grass, the hood pop, you know what I mean? Music playing from the car. Then you got to find ways to get it. And then you try to sort of kind of be nice and see if you can't steal the second pavilion over there. Nobody ever did that. I'm sorry, I'm from the hood. My bad. Y'all all got parks in y'all backyard. Maybe y'all got backyards big enough to be a park. I, but I didn't have that provision, that provision in my life. I had to go to the park because I was in the ghetto. And in the ghetto, you had to go down to the park that they said, this is where we're going to cage y'all in, play basketball, do your picnics, and y'all work out who get the table first. That was my life. Somebody say, don't worry. Just live right. Say, don't worry. I'm going somewhere. Say, don't worry. Just live right. Don't worry. Just live right. So by the time you pop the trunk and you pull out all the plastic and all the plates and all the fake gla uh, glasses and, and all the little, you know, things that you do to make the party look right. Y'all do all that right there. And you get the place all set up. How many of y'all would not like to be able to have one of your guests come with a two-piece fish meal? And then you say, hey, bring that over here to me. And poof, voila, no barbecue, no lighter fluid, no beef rub, no rib rub, no chicken rub, and no burning of the food by Uncle Clint, by Uncle Clint, who, who who swear he know how to cook, and be over there burn and waiting for the food. How many of y'all would like to be able to say, "Hey, Johnny, hey Sally, tell your boy to come here, bring that two fish that, that that two piece fish meal over here, and then say, Father, bless this meal and feed everybody in the name of Yeshua Hamashiach." Poof, and everybody got a two piece fish meal with biscuits. Y'all don't want to have that power. I'm just messing with y'all. It, it's, it's a little bit different, but you get the funny part, right? That wasn't funny. It's Monday. Y'all not going to moan on me. We're going to laugh all day today. I promise you. So here's the catch. Don't worry about a thing, but live right. Okay. Let's talk about what we mean. Apostle, what's your word for the day? Don't, you know, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word. Here it is. Go to Matthew chapter number six. Come on. Matthew chapter six. I'm going to share my Bible with you guys. So I want y'all to catch this. Matthew chapter six. Verse and number 25. Let's get started right there. Let's talk about what Yahweh wants you and I to do if you are a believer in him. Now, I talked about your Bible. I did. I talked about our Bible. I talked about it like it had a tail. Well, technically, I got my Bible on screen. I got one of many. And technically, my Bible does have a tail, y'all. I'm just saying it's a little, it's a page finder. Y'all y'all do know technically it's got a tail. Y'all not going to, that was funny. Y'all just mad because y'all had to work today. The Bible says six days shall a man work. Stop complaining. You got to work. Sabbath, you rest. So stop moaning. It's Monday. Your Bible got a tail. Look, mine do. If yours don't, stop buying them from the dollar store. Get one that got a tail on it. Mine got a tail, see? But it's not a bad thing. <laughs> it's actually a funny thing. Because that helps me find the page where the word of Elohim is. So I talked about your Bible. Messiah never said man shall live by every word of the Bible. The Bible demonstrates how men did and did not live by the important instructions found in the Bible. And then their rewards or their blessings forth said. Yes, that's interesting, uh, Prophet Leslie. It is. Nobody else finds that interesting? Okay, fine. Well, the song about it. Like to hear it? Here it go. Don't you worry about a thing. Okay. Matthew, here it goes. <laughs> Look at Matthew chapter number six. I I'm just glad to be alive today. I'm glad to have activity. I'm glad to be able to smell. I'm glad to be able to taste. I'm glad to be able to laugh. Some of y'all need to laugh. Laugh, because some of y'all got gas. Laugh. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to be burping with sour belch and all jammed up and gassy. Laugh. Let Yahweh 
fill your life with laughter. Watch. Somebody say, don't worry about a thing. Say it. Say it. Don't worry about a thing. If you're a believer, if you're a believer, say, don't worry about a thing. Don't worry about a thing. Mm-hmm. Because some of y'all worry. Y'all worried about how the bill's going to get paid. You worried about how the clothes going to be on your baby's back. You worried about what kind of food going to be on your on your stove. You worried about what kind of retirement you're going to have. Somebody say, don't worry about a thing. Say it, say it, say it, say it. Come on. Oh, man, just four of y'all with me today? Okay, let's keep moving. Don't worry about your thing. I need y'all to make that a prophecy in your life. Tell yourself. Don't say it because I asked you to say it. Prophesy to yourself. That I heard that. I felt that. I don't know who that was that said that with that masculine voice, but that's how you talk to yourself. Don't stop worrying about things, man. Watch why. Here's what Messiah says through the word of Elohim in the book of Matthew chapter and number six. Go to verse 25. Listen. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Don't you worry about a thing. Look, what you shall eat or what you shall drink or what you sh or yet for your body, what you shall put on it. OK, I'm going I'm to pause because it's Monday. I want to see your faces. Look me in my eyes. Look me in my eyes. Right. If you're on video, look me in my eyes. Right. And see my eyes. I'll take my glasses off. OK, look me right in my eyeballs. See the eyes are the windows of the soul. How many of you are worried about what you're eating? You're worried about what you're going to put on your body? And you're worried about your mortgage, your rent, your car note, your life insurance? Anybody will confess? Oh, yeah. We've That's worried me. about those things. Yes. Right? Okay. Yeah. Anybody want to be free of worry? Yep. Yes. 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 Come on. Let's go here. Let me show you how to do that. Verse 25 says, therefore, I say unto you, this is Yeshua HaMashiach speaking, the Adonai in him. He says, moderators, he says, take no thought for your life. Take no thought for your life. Meaning what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, or don't even worry about what you're going to put on your body. Listen, y'all, listen, y'all, is not life more than meat it is not the body more than raiment so when we look at this word life here can y'all hear me no we can't okay so verse number six chapter six verse 25 says don't worry about life what you can eat what you're going to drink or what you're going to put on your body because is not life more than meat and is not the body more than raiment? So this word life in the Greek, I'm not a real big fan of the Greek, but I do it because it has to do it. The work here is pushe, right? Pushke. It means the breath is not breathing more than, 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 than what you're going to put on your body. He says, is not uh, that which is rational for the and immortal soul is, 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 is the vitality even of plants. Um, is that more important? Your mind, is that not more important? Your soul, is that not more important, right? So he says, is not life, which is where your mind, your soul, and your body are, verse 25, verse 25, is not life more than meat? Is not the body more than raiment? Behold, pay attention. Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow. Neither do they reap. They don't gather in the barns. Ain't it funny, y'all, how the birds, they just live in a constant drive through. I, I think that's funny. B birds, they just live in a constant drive through they, they, they drive into a tree, put their beak inside, take out what they want. They drive up to a parcel of land, stick their beak down into the dirt, pull up a mussel or pull up a crab or a pull up a, a worm or pull up a cricket, pull up a piece of locust and a, and a snake. They just pull up food. They just, they, they don't have a drive up. They got to fly up. They don't have a drive through. They got to fly through. Birds, man, look, bird, man, look here. I want to be like the birds. Do you know you can be like the birds? You have a fly through. Oh, y'all think I'm tripping? Fly through. 
<laughs> you, you, it's a fly through. They have a fly through. They fly through farmland. They fly through marshes. They fly through water and they eat. And they don't have to pay nothing. You know why that is? Look at verse number 26. Behold, look at Matthew 6, 26. The fowl of the air, they don't sow. In case y'all don't know what sow means, that means that they don't plant seeds, not in purpose. They don't reap, meaning they don't go and harvest and then store it up somewhere like the regular people do and, and squirrels do and humans do and, 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 and bears do. They don't do that. Yet, Yahweh our Elohim feeds them. All right, here's a question, people. Here's a question, people. Are you much better than they? Are you not much better than they? True. Absolutely. Yes. If I remember correctly, in the book of Belshit, Genesis, Yahweh said that humanity, some might say I'm human, some might say I'm human, some might say I'm human. I'm human. human. I'm human. Humanity has been given dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the Adoma. So the birds are doing a fly through. Why not you? Did Yeshua lick up a horse? Listen, did you? Let me put this off mic because I don't want y'all to catch this the wrong way. Did Yeshua gather in the barns? Yeah, I set y'all up with the I set y'all up with the first storyline about him turning fish and lo the, the two fish and five loaves into bread, uh, uh, the two fish and five loaves and making that a meal for everybody to eat from. Yeah, I set y'all up. Did he store anything? No. Was he carrying that on his person? No. But when he got done, everybody finished eating. They walked away with twelve baskets of food, didn't they? Yep. Okay. Do y'all know he did that? Definitely twice, and we believe he did it three times. Yep. Nobody else gonna talk to us. Just me and this person who had this conversation. Anybody else know that that happened? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Okay. Let me let me touch something in your heart that might touch y'all a little bit deeper. Do y'all know that Yeshua didn't wait for his tax return season? Funny, very funny. I want y'all to pay attention. Listen, do y'all know he did not wait for tax season? That part, sir. He went through a land and went through a territory where they required a tax when you left. Whenever he needed taxes, he just sent Peter fishing. That's true. Now, the, are y'all understanding this? Because I don't, I don't think we're really paying attention to it because we're so deep being churchy. I don't think we're accessing the power that Yahweh has given unto us by virtue of his word. Don't you worry about a thing that the word has made. Don't you worry about a thing. Man shall not live by what you see because what you see, it ain't there. When he fed those 3,000 the first time and 4,000 the second time, and we believe another group another time, they didn't have but two fish and five loaves. Will two fish and five loaves feed 3,000 people? Some might say sight. <laughs> oh, y'all not talking to me. Y'all just going to let me and this person have this conversation the whole time. Nobody going to say sight? Right, That's right, sight. Right. So we don't live by sight. We live by his word. And the word in Yeshua took the bread and fish and spoke over it and 4,000 men plus children and wives, y'all didn't catch that part, got fed. Now, y'all going to think that I'm trying to be super spiritual, all mystical and everything like that. I'm not telling you you're going to go out here and go to the store and grab you a piece of Wonder Bread and then get yourself a, 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 a Long John Silver's fish piece meal or a McDonald's fish sandwich and come talking about, you know, can I get a double filet of fish with some extra tartar sauce and then go to church and talk about y'all watch this miracle. No, I'm not talking about that. Some of y'all will try it. Like, Ooh, pastor, I found that. I got, I'm got. i going to go get a double filet of fish from Burger King or from McDonald's. I'm going to do a fly through. No, stop. 
listen, seriously, the word of Elohim provides everything you need. Don't worry about what you need. That's Yahweh's job. You worry about what you're supposed to do. When you are living in his word, everything you need finds you. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Okay, listen. Uh huh. So when you do as instructed, the provider of the instructions provides the nourishment and necessities to carry out the job. Okay, let me let me let me help y'all. See, here's a catch. Remember, we talked about the birds. Somebody say the birds. Somebody say the birds. Somebody say the birds. The birds. Mm -hmm. the birds. Birds, birds. Okay, I heard the birds twice. Good, good, good. Thank you, men, men for, for speaking up for me today. I need, I, I need to hear some of these brothers talk to me today. So look at verse number 26. I'm going to help you all again. Watch this on the passage. We're here talking about don't worry. Watch this. Verse number 26. He says, behold the fowls of the air. That's the birds. They don't sow. They don't reap. They don't gather in the barns and they do. Yet Yahweh, our heavenly father, feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Watch, 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 watch. Do y'all know the significance of that passage? Mm, let me help you. Somebody say birds, Genesis chapter one. Say birds. I'm going to put it up on the screen. Birds, Come on. Birds. one more. That's it. Just one more time. Just say birds. One more again. One more. I dare you. Birds. I dare you. One more again. Say birds. Now watch this. Here's the catch. Go down here with me. Look at this. Go down here with me. I'm in Genesis. I'm pulling up Genesis chapter one. I'm putting it right now on your screen. Listen, verse number 19. I want y'all to catch this. Look at verse number 20. It says... <clears throat> And Elohim said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that have life. What's that next word there, y'all? If you're looking on screen, can you tell me? Verse 20, chapter one. Okay, I'll tell y'all because y'all messing up my y'all messing up my studio time. I can't be having dead air on my on my platform. Listen, I'm gonna read it for y'all. And Elohim said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the waters, the waters, the waters. Watch this. You know what? Let me start at verse 19. Thank you, Yahweh. Here's what he said. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. He saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Yahweh is about to start day five. Verse 20, chapter one. Elohim said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that has life and the fowl that fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And Elohim created great whales, every living thing that moves in the waters. And he had the waters that brought forth abundantly after their kind, every winged fowl after his kind. Elohim saw that this was good in day five. Elohim then, verse 22, he blessed those things from the waters. He says, be fruitful, multiply, fill the waters and the seas. Oh, 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 oh. But you fowl, you birds, I don't want y'all to stay in the sea anymore. I don't want y'all to live and fill the seas anymore with waters. I don't want you to fill the waters anymore with your person, fowl. I want you to multiply in the earth. Some might say the birds, the birds, the birds. Come on. Oh, I feel the anointing. He tells the birds, he says, you fowl, I want you to multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Y'all didn't catch that, did you? Why do you think Yeshua put this in, Matthew, when he says, I want y'all to pay attention. Y'all stay with me for a second. Don't leave. Don't leave. I've not lost my mind. Yes, I have. Um, Matthew chapter six. I've lost my mind. I've lost my mind. I want to get his. I want to get his so desperately. Look at what he says. Matthew 26. Matthew chapter 6, verse 26, Messiah says, and I'm going to start at verse 25, take no thought for food, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to put on. Behold, for example, the fowl of the air. Now, do y'all see what he just did there? Okay, let me help you because I guess y'all need some glasses. Let me take my glasses off. I'm going to give y'all my glasses and I want y'all to pay attention to me. Now, to, to, to the word. The word says in Genesis chapter one, verse 23, I think it is 20. Let me make sure I'm right. Cause y'all be y'all, y'all will, y'all will, y'all will text me and email me and talk about apostle. You wasn't right. Okay, fine. Whatever. So let me get down to verse number 20 and find out where we are. Verse 20. Yeah. Let's go down here. Verse 20, chapter one, verse number 20, 
19, 20. Okay, verse 20 is, this is right here. Okay, bada bing, bada boom. Right, there we go. So in verse number 22, Yahweh says, he blessed everything in the waters. Y'all say the waters, say the waters. Mm -hmm. The waters. He blessed the everything waters. in the waters. He told the things he made in the waters to be fruitful, to multiply the stuff he made from the waters. He said, I want everything I made from the waters to fill the waters with multiplication of itself. Fill the seas, fill the waters, fill the lakes, fill the oceans. But you birds, I got a different job for y'all. Y'all not going to multiply in the waters anymore. Where are they going to multiply, y'all? In the land. Nobody else can see that? Y'all, nobody, nobody, I only got one person who's been talking to me, and they my amen, they my amen corner. They've been talking all day. Ain't nobody else going to help me. Where are they supposed to multiply, y'all? Where are the birds multiplying? They're multiplying in the earth. Some of you say, well, Pastor, we heard that before. We've, we heard you preach this. Uh-huh. I'm not preaching it. I'm, I'm, I'm reminding you of it. He tells the birds that come from the water, you no longer go home to the water. You, by my instruction, are being relocated to the earth. Okay, y'all gonna make me do it. Amen. It's, Amen. it's okay. I got, I got, you know what I found? I got enough. I got everything Amen. I need. No, no, don't come on now. I got it. Why? I, I, I got it covered. I'm gonna watch it. They're gonna, they're gonna be the mm -hmm. And since I need some men to say amen, amen, I got them too. I got them canned and ready to go. Listen. So he tells us, listen, he tells us in verse number 22 of Bershit 1, I want the birds I made in the waters to no longer go back to the waters and I want them to multiply in the earth. Now let's go to Matthew chapter six, one more time. And we're going to go down to verse number 26. He says, behold the fowl of the air. Since Yahweh relocated them day five of human creation, since Yahweh relocated them, they don't even have to make their own food. They don't even have to sow. They don't even have to reap. They just needed to obey his instructions to multiply in a land that wasn't theirs. Woo, my God, help me here. So when you actually obey the instructions of Elohim for you, you don't have to worry about anything. Oh, y'all don't believe me? Okay, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter number 28. I just want to make sure we very clear here. Deuteronomy chapter number 28. Y'all still with me? Are y'all still here? Y'all still together with me? Come on. Look at Deuteronomy chapter number 28. And it shall come to pass. Verse 1. I got it up on the screen if you want to watch it on Facebook or YouTube. The Bible is open. It says the, the Torah is open. The word that created all life is open. And it shall come to pass if you will hearken diligently unto the voice of Yahweh your Elohim. Well, let me ask y'all a question. Did any birds return back to the water? Not at all. They no. take a bath, of course. Thank God cleanliness is next to godliness. They'll they'll jump into a they'll that's why they like to have the little water pools that y'all make them little you know they like the little puddles you put in your backyard they come and they flap their wings in the rain so they don't they they do not go back to live in the waters have they no bird has gone back to the because the birds obey Elohim the only people the only thing that does not obey Elohim that Elohim made is humans oh yeah. The only thing that does not obey the word of Elohim is humanity. Y'all didn't hear me, did y'all? That's real. So the birds are living in the trees, aren't they? <laughs> Woody Woodpecker. Heckle and Jekyll. Shoot, Big Bird from Sesame Street. You got the eagles. Who, who did not fly high, 
you know, I ain't gonna mess with y'all out of Philly. Y'all all right, y'all gonna be okay. But anyway, listen, you got the birds, you got turkeys, you got ravens, you got all the birds did not, no bird went back to the water. They eat there, they, they fly by there, they do a fly-in, they got, you know, you got drive-ins, they got the fly-ins, and they scoop up what they want, the pelican, the seagull, the eagle, the osprey. They, they, they swoop in and swoop out, right? But they live in the trees now because they obeyed the word of Elohim. Ooh. Oh, I'm going to set y'all up one more time if I give you the punchline. Deuteronomy 28 says it this way, verse 1, and it shall come to pass. I need a big shout, and somebody say, if. 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 It shall come to pass if you will hearken diligently unto the voice of Yahweh your Elohim. The birds did. The birds hearkened diligently to this voice. They have not gone back to the water. They are not going on strike. Talking about Yahweh, I don't like the trees. I don't like the dirt. I want to go back to the water. Oh, God, let me in the water. They don't complain. They just went to the trees. And he says, if you will do diligently to observe and do his commandments, which I command you this day, that Yahweh will set you on high above all nations. Now, let me look at this logistically. Let me look at this practically. Let me look at this accurately. Are the birds in the trees sitting high above your house? Yes. Y'all going to make me do it. Y'all really going to make me do it. Okay, y'all, y'all just, y'all just, I think y'all like to hear it. Whoa! The birds are sitting high up in the trees above your house. Matter of fact, some of them sit on top of your roof in the crest of your house. He ain't never lied. Look, if you just obey him, he will cause you, watch what he says, Yahweh, verse one, he says, I command you this day that Yahweh, our Elohim, will set you on high above all nations of the earth and, and, and all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you if you hearken unto the voice of Yahweh, your Elohim. So I wonder, y'all, if the birds stop listening to Elohim's commandment and they decide to go back out into the water, What y'all think gonna happen? They die. I like the way you're talking. I need some more people to understand that. So, because this is happening with the birds and the bees, we seem to not think it happens with us. But they were made before us. They should be an example for us. That's why Messiah said, "Why are you worried about what to eat? Because Yahweh told you to leave a land and go to this land." I guess you thought he wouldn't feed you there. And for some of you, now that you've left the land and the kingdom of darkness and you say you've come into the kingdom of the marvelous light, you still think you got to do what you did in darkness to eat over here. Right? No. Oh. You worried about how you're going to eat. You worried about what you're going to put on. You worried about what your house going to look like. And Yahweh is like, in my kingdom, Listen, when I tell you to do something, I got you covered. You will have the best of everything. It will be quality. And by the way, it'll cost you nothing. You ain't got to pay all these exorbitant prices for all this poor workmanship and shoddy craftsmanship and then want to complain about it later on and frustrate you to make you cuss somebody out. Now you got to come and get under the blood, repent and sit down at the altar and give me a sacrifice because you to mess around and not represent my kingdom right. If you will simply hearken unto the voice that I've given you, obey my Torah, you will not have to, like the birds, worry about what you're going to put on. Do you know birds make it through snowstorms? They fly away. But when it's raining, they can be in the toughest of wet weather. I've watched them in hurricane season, buckle their head down, put their feathers close to their skin, and that feathering system keeps their insides as dry as can be, water beating off their backs. When the wind is over, they wake up and shake their wings off and dry off. That's true. Messiah says, behold the fowl. They don't sow. Do you see them fighting for you for land? Hey, back up, human. We own these 19 acres. <laughs> Do y'all think I'm being funny? 
I am very funny, but catch it. Messiah specifically stated, pay attention to the birds. Why? Because Yahweh specifically told Moshe, when I made the waters, I told the birds to go into the earth. I'm going to use this example later. So Moshe, the fact that I'm telling you guys to leave, like I told Adam or 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 or, or uh, Avraham and his father Terah, leave the land of Chaldea wherever I send you. I'm gonna feed you. I'm gonna clothe you. I'm gonna take care of you. So your years in the wilderness, you knew that I was the I am that I am. You knew that I am the I will be that I will be. I'll do you just like I do the birds. Y'all don't wanna hear me. The birds even flew in while the children of Israel were in the wilderness to feed the children of Israel. Because, you know, birds taste like chicken. Yeah, you know, so they brought some quail in. The quail flew three feet high in a camp of 3.2 million people who was hungry. How y'all think hunting went that day? All because they follow El y'all. Y'all didn't catch that yet. Y'all still caught up in the inhumane part. Y'all got Peter on your mind. Peter got y'all hemmed up in your head. Okay, my bad. I get it. I get it. That's okay. Oh, they. I know they ate, but y'all got Peter. Oh, we can't say that kind of thing. That's just so inhumane. I, you, you know, I, right? Yeah. Y'all got get Peter off your mind. It's a beautiful organization, and you should honor everything that Elohim has made. However, uh, you, you know, Yahweh sent the quail in so that they could eat. Did, did they harvest the quail? No. Oh, no, sir. oh, they did not. Wait a minute. Well, let me get this other part straight then. They needed some bread too. Did they, did they harvest the bread? Or was there manna provided on high every morning and then they ate the manna because it was provided daily per their need? Did they sow manna? Not at all. Mm. No, sir. The reason they were provided for people was because they obeyed his instructions and they left Egypt. And they're in the wild place heading towards their place of promise. There, as long as they obeyed the word of Elohim, he fed them in the wilderness, a nomadic people, I believe close to 3.2 million people floating around, no place that they can call home, stopping and spotting wells, following lines that Abraham and Itzhak left them of, of, of wells of water that were dug, and they're able to find water in a wild place and yet eat. Yahweh provides, Messiah, Matthew 6, tells us, listen, I'm done. He tells us in Matthew 6, verse 25. Let me give it to you now so you got it. Matthew 6, 25, it's on the screen. Look at what he says. I say unto you, don't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to put on. The fowls of the air, they don't sow, they don't reap, yet Yahweh feeds them. Are you, if you obey his words like the bird did, not much better than they? By the way, which of you taking thought? Look at the passage. I'm putting it on the screen for you. Look at the passage. Which of you, verse 26, 27, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto your stature? And why take you thought for raiment? Y'all worried about whether you're going to wear Gucci, Louis, Louboutin, Issa Laurent. You worry whether you're going to wear Coach. Or some and, and and half this stuff is garbage. I said it out loud. Why do we pay so much money for for trash? Oh, but because somebody's name on it that makes trash expensive. I said that out loud. So we worried about raiment. Consider, look at what he says, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't work. They don't toil. They don't, they don't, they don't even spin. 
Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these lilies of the field. Verse 30 says, wherefore, if Elohim can clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is not, it's cast into the oven. Shall he not much more put clothes on you like he did Adam and Eshai? They try to dress themselves. He's like, yeah, no, that's not going to work. Take that off. That's out of style. That was funny. We're in this love together. <laughs> Listen, verse 31 says, therefore, take no thought. No, I'm sorry. Verse 30, verse 30, verse 30. If Elohim clothed the grass of the field, today is and tomorrow's cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Faith is the operative word. The just live by faith, not by sight. Don't worry about anything. Just live right. You live righteous by understanding his instructions. His instructions are in the Torah. His Torah is the word of Elohim. So if you have little faith, then you think that you have to be responsible for feeding you, clothing you, protecting you. Well, that's true. You have to be worried about that. But the way not to worry about that is by following Yahweh's instructions. Then he becomes responsible for that and shows you how to get it, shows you where it's at. And that's when the blessings of Deuteronomy 28 fall on you. Watch verse 31. Therefore, take no thought by you saying, what shall we eat? What are we going to drink? Wherewithal shall we be clothed? Because the Gentiles, people who don't serve me, they seek these things. Your heavenly father knows that you have need of all these things. Verse 33, I'm going to close out. But seek you, you, Mr. and Mrs. I'm Christian, Mr. and Mrs. I serve God, Mr. and Mrs. I'm saved, Mr. and Mrs. Hallelujah, he come a shanda, he coming in the Honda, oh my, 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 don't sit on my, my bow tie, oh God, I'm a shata, yeah, Lord, hallelujah, I'm a prayer warrior, I'm a demon buster, I'm a devil chaser, I'm of all for the kingdom, I'm this, I'm that, all that you do. He says, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. That's the Torah. And all those things you will make, you will build, you will create. Anybody gonna stop me from telling this lie? Nobody gonna stop me from lying? All these things you will invent. All these things you will you will sow. All these things you will you will you will harvest. All these things you will you will build on your own with your intellect. Y'all not gonna stop me from lying. Y'all gonna let me keep lying on my own broadcast. I thought y'all was here. I thought we was in this together. Y'all just gonna let me keep reading this lie. Y'all Bibles read that way because mine don't read that way. Here's what mine says. But seek ye first the kingdom of Elohim and his righteousness and the things you thought you needed, Yahweh himself will have them added unto you. So if you obey in his righteousness, verse 34, take no thought for tomorrow. Just wake up and ask me, where do I go? Just follow the instructions that he gave you from his word. Take no thought for tomorrow. For the morrow will take thought for the things of itself sufficient even unto the evil therein of that day. And y'all need to know, y'all need to stop worrying about evil because evil helps to elevate you. The birds, they were told to go and live in the trees. And ever since they went to go live in the trees, they ain't had to work one day. Did y'all did know that? The beaver got to build a dam. The shark got to hunt. Yahweh adds to the bird because the bird went and lived where Yahweh said, go live. I know it ain't where you're supposed to be, bird. I know I made you in the water, but I want you from now on to go live in the dirt. The bird ain't complain. 
Uh, you know, Abraham, you and your dad get out of the land of Chaldea. You're, you're 75 years old. I know you've built a life. You got a whole civilization. You got a whole network. But I want you to leave there and come with me and let me just show you some stuff. And don't worry about eating. And, and, and the thing was, Abraham was rich in Chaldea. But when he left based on the word of Elohim, he became richer when he was in the wilderness. Oh, now it's starting to make sense. Okay. Don't worry, just live right. Yahweh will supply everything you and I have need of. I'm a living witness. And even if you make a mistake, live right. How do you live right if I make a mistake? You get the mistake right. You repent for the mistake. You be blood washed for that mistake. And you mean to serve Elohim better and greater each new day. And all you have need of, Yahweh supplies. Don't you worry about a thing. Honor his word and move on from there. These are the things that Yahweh wants you and I to know and to do. Now, we're talking about these things because Messiah talks about them. Greater works than what you've seen Messiah do shall you do. Just obey his word. Now, for many of you, before you think it means you're going to wake up in the morning and say, God, do I go left? Do I go right? Do I stop? Do I duck? Do I jump? Do I swim? Do I put on a coat? No. Your instincts tell you what to do if it's cold. Put a jacket on. Here is what you do. Here is how you make manifest and cause the, uh, the accordion file to open up that's available to you. You keep his word. You keep his instructions. Do you know the greatest, simplest way for Yahweh to elevate you is to stay in his presence did you know that Yahweh put a provision in life the day after he made humanity to have dominion over the earth that will provide man all he needs to live on the earth? That provision was keeping Sabbath. So Yahweh can show you everything that he made before you got here and how to use it. That's a jaw drop. That's a mic drop. That's a jewel, a gem. That's a bomb. That's truth. So the best thing to do to honor this is to honor the instructions. Keep the Sabbath. That's how you acknowledge him and what you're going to do in all your way. Come into the Sabbath. Don't think your own words. Don't bring your own entertainment. Don't find your own pleasure. Seek him. Sit with him. Seek ye first the kingdom and his words of rightness, words of instruction. Carry those instructions, which are righteousness, out, and the world becomes conducive and tranquil and harmonious with you. Y'all want to talk about, oh, the universe brings me this, the universe brings me that. It's cute. That is, be careful that you're not caught up in some mysticism, but the word of Elohim created it. Remember this, and I'm not going to go into it. Yahweh cursed the ground in Adam's day for a reason. Come sit with us in Sabbath and learn why. You call it chakra and you calling it all these sounds and ohms. This is, there's some validity to those things, but you need to know why it happened, where it was created, and why it no longer works without you going through some real serious quote unquote meditation to make it even appear to be effective in your life. The Torah already told you what it was. Yahweh disconnected man from the earth. He cursed the earth for man's sake, for a reason. We got caught up in him cursing the woman's body. We got caught up in him cursing the serpent's body and realized he didn't curse the man. There's a reason he cursed the earth for man's sake. You think it might have something to do with the word or the instructions inside of it? Because the earth and humanity are supposed to be in harmony. You know, technically, Adam 
is a word used for a creation called human from the Adoma. Man was made from Adoma, thus man was called Adom. I gotta go. Just know man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh our Elohim. The question is, are we listening to the mouth of Elohim? Or are we listening to the Bible? See, I told you, he always drags me in. And then he say some blasphemous stuff like that. <laughs> My bad. Sorry. Not sorry. I hope you heard me. Yeah, I said what I said. Don't you worry about a thing. Seek ye first the kingdom of Elohim and all of his righteousness and all the things you have need of to operate in the earth that Yahweh made you to work in will be added unto you. I think we just do in Christendom one, two, three. We just do way too much. Yahweh has a simple plan. All right, Zion, I got to get out of here. I think I heard a question somewhere on platform. Yes, sir. Come on, talk to me quick. What you got? So let's say you have somebody that's homeless that gave their life to God. Okay. And they've been stealing to eat. Okay. They get away with it. When they stop stealing and, and they hold on to God's word, it's like, how does that person survive do they keep sinning and ask for forgiveness or is it like you know how do they feed themselves but not steal all right so here's a catch that makes sense it, it makes a, a, a perfect amount of stint a sense let me show you what how the important part of that is Proverbs chapter 6, verse 30, and put it on the screen. Now, some of y'all are going to think I have lost my mind, but I'm going to tell you what Solomon understands from the Torah as a man who uses the Torah to judge all of the kingdom. Are y'all all right with this? Can I give y'all Can I give y'all what, 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 is, what is explained here? Listen, verse 30 of chapter 6, I'm going to put it on the screen so y'all can see it. Verse 30. Chapter six, the book of Proverbs. My computer is slowing up on me, so you have to wait for a second. Proverbs 6.30, here it is. And he makes a statement. Men, do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But 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 if he be found, then he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. Now, so if a man steals because he's hungry and he's homeless, he's without job, he's without a home, he steals to eat, don't judge him, don't kill him. When you help him community to get on his feet, he will repay for what he took. The issue is the community has to help that individual to get back on his feet if we're talking about the commonwealth. Now, the predicator to your comment and your question is if that person who was homeless gives his life for real, for real to Messiah, gives his life for real, for real to the words of Elohim and begins to honor the word of Elohim, Yahweh will send everything that that man or that woman needs. It's when they think they got to still do it on their own. They have to be given over to the word. And that's where you join fellowship. That's where you gather with those who are of the faith. They're not going to do it for you. But inside of the faith of Torah, there is an item called the commonwealth, which the people who adhere to the concepts of Torah together organize to consider that type of depravity. How can we, through Sidka, through charity, get this person who's now a believer and a proven believer? 
Not just somebody who came out of prison said, I want to serve God. And they know they only said it because they know Christians have been prone to give to people who say, oh, I'll join your church and just give anything. I'm saying this out loud. I'm going to take a moment to break all this foolishness down. Can I keep it a billion with y'all? Amen. Okay, that's two people. Okay, that's only one person. And they live in the UK. Okay, so here's the catch. The, the, the church has been so prone to give you, have you giving in charity because it's the right thing to do. It's the Jesus thing to do. But if you read the Torah properly, brethren take care of brethren. Just like healing is the children's bread. You're not ready. Uh, if your brother asks you for something, shoot, for that matter, even your enemy who may be in the faith, who wants you dead, even your enemy, you don't let them go without. So when the commonwealth adheres to the words of Torah in its principles and its righteousness, even an enemy of yours in the commonwealth won't go without. That part. If y'all want me to set up a program on the preceding word to talk about all of that and what that encompasses, I'll gladly do it. But I need y'all to ask me because I'm not going to do it on my own. I like you. Please do, sir. Please do. I need y'all to say commonwealth. So once, so, so once you come into the commonwealth lifestyle of the Torah, now you understand how the kingdom of Elohim is designed to work even in a world that may have some antagonistic against you, but all adhering to the Torah. <laughs> okay, we don't have time today because the proceeding word is just about to be over. It's been a joy and a fun time. So if a person is within need and without and does, does not have, then you will find in the book of Acts what took place there. Once a person has shown they have converted to the faith or the, as we say, doctrine of the apostles, then those adhering to the doctrine of the apostle are on the lookout for those being converted to this same type of doctrine. And then they, having watched, not being nosy, but having watched someone being consistent, beating it and getting it out the mud themselves. And then they're like, okay, this person is, they're, 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 they're consistent. They're consistent with the feast. They're coming, they're here. They're doing the things necessary. They're keeping Shabbat. They're trying to live right. They got struggles. We're just watching. We ain't gonna let them starve, but they, they have to prove that they are serious about this. And as they prove that they are serious about this by watching whether they provide or someone else Yahweh sends provides, the commonwealth is still watching so that when they can actually have proof that this individual is sincere about this new lifestyle, they'll build that man a house. They'll build that person, a, get them a brand new car. They will make sure that that person in their conversion, proven conversion, because some people just say stuff to get the benefits of a community and don't mean to live like the community. That's where Christendom makes its horrid mistake. You just give out stuff because somebody say, I love Jesus. And you think they're converted and living the way you live in, and they're not. And that's not your brother. That's a liar. Let not that man think he shall receive anything of Elohim. And if he gets it from you, that's coming from Elohim. Amen. Since I'm in a singing mood. Okay, so next. My said be fine, it's too much. Father, we thank you for the day. Thank you for the word, your word, not ours. Your words, not ours. Father, I pray you that all can track back through the word everything we just said, not just through the Bible, but through your word. 
that all things spoken were truthful. Father, we don't despise that man, that woman who's hungry, they should steal. We don't admonish stealing because thou shalt not steal. There's a protocol that you have for that, but we're not going to judge them if they're stealing because they're literally hungry. We will bring them to a place of restoration through the process of their commitment and their conversion to you. Therefore, my brethren, your servant, we will in commonwealth live. We ask you now, teach us and give us discernment. Show us what's real, what's not real. Show us who's playing the game because they can finesse the system. This way we make no errors in the resources you've given us to produce for your kingdom's manifestation in the earth. Sometimes our humor, Father, may make the point sort of kind of difficult to be heard and seen. I pray you now get everybody through the humor and even the personality of the presenter to know the pureness of your word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh, who is our Elohim. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we say and we pray. Amen. Now, I don't want to leave this dead here. I want to make sure I clear this last piece up. On that question that uh, one of our brothers brought on platform, if that person still feels a need to steal, there are resources availed in every community that they can receive nourishment and sustenance especially if they're in America. Y'all don't think that America has to have people who are without. There is no less food in America today than there will be tomorrow. And you got more food going to dumps and waste uh, than to the actual waste, W-A-I-S-T, of humans who could use it. It's being held hijacked by pricing. Charity does exist. There are organizations that help. So stealing because we're hungry isn't a necessity, particularly in America and a democracy of similar fashion. So when you've converted, a person converts into the faith of Yahweh or Elohim, and they are sincere about it, get into a fellowship that is teaching and showing the word. The resources become available. The resources become identifiable and the conversion becomes a actual form and lifestyle. So today, for anyone who might find themselves in that condition and feeling that they need to, remember, study his word. Get into his word. Find fellowships that actually teach his word, not just Christian things, not just church, not just Bible. Teach his writ. Because in that word that creates You'll be surprised what you come in contact with and how you can use it for far greater a time than a temporal experience that some religious relationships can produce for you. You have many charities that are available under the banner of Christendom but they're not to be manipulated either. If that person can't find the resources, contact us. Me and my office will direct you no matter where you are in the continental US of A and even in some countries as to where you can provide and have sustenance provided for you, even shelter. Clothing isn't even a discussion. But this principle we talk about today of don't worry about a thing, garments, drink, or clothing, is spiritual. That manifests in our natural. But you have to adhere to the word of Elohim because it is the creator of every need you have and a supplier of every need you have. But you got to hearken diligently into the voice of Yahweh. It's not the game that we play in Christendom. It's a commonwealth. This is a kingdom thing. My name is Apostle V.W. Jones. I hope and pray that you all have been edified by the teachings. It may be shocking to some, but it is very much real. 
And I promise you, Yahweh loves you to life eternal. Well, may Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. May Yahweh lift his countenance upon you and grant you all 13 attributes of his shalom. This is our earnest prayer in this space and time. May Yahweh bless you again. Need truth, this is the place for you. Don't need to complicate it. It's best to keep it basic. Uh, open the book, the word is self-approved. He's Alpha and Omega, the answer since the early ages. What you should do is learn about the greatest. Just so you know, our door is always open. Let's study together instead of debating. Share our differences. Let love heal all that's broken. Room 11, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Shalom.